This is so hard. Poppy, any ideas? You got anything? Anything good? Anything special? Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another video. You know what? Uh, I just think I thought about a really cool idea. So, how about let's make some coffee and get started. as much as I enjoyed making it. This was actually a really fun introduction to make. Woke up this morning, I was like, what do I do today? And all these ideas started rushing in. I'm just like, wow. But anyways, my name is Vasily Bileski. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy to have you guys here. If you guys are new to this channel, it's your first time watching, welcome. I just want to say a personal welcome to each and every single one of you. If you guys are a returning viewer, dude, you know I love you. Anyways, but for today's video, as you guys saw in the introduction, it's actually a really difficult topic because I didn't know how to explain this. And the reason why I didn't know how to explain this is because this is actually pertaining to my life and how to summarize it all down to shh, YouTube content is kind of going to be a challenge. But today's challenge is also producing this whole entire video start to finish all in one day. And I hope we can make this happen. So. You see, back before I was married, um, my sister we would organize these little groups. She just came back from Bible school, high on just serving and ministering and doing things for God. And so she came to our hometown and she started organizing these little groups and we would go out to Venice downtown and we would go out there and what we would do is evangelize, pray for people, see things happen. And I was just like, man, I really wanna do this too. But back in that time, my relationship with God is not like it is right now. This relationship with God only grew about two, two years ago, whenever I realized who he is in my life. So back then I was just like, oh, I'm a Christian. I grew up in a Christian family. I do all these things. I can go out and minister as well. And so I joined my sister along for these things and we would go out and we would literally find people on the streets. We had these little clipboards in our hands. And we were like, what would you need prayer for? Would you want some kind of healing to happen in your life? Would you like friends? Would you like love? And all these things. And it was just perfect. I loved the idea because we'd walk up to people and be like, what do, you, what do you need right now? And they'd be like, I want healing. And we'd be like, what do you need healing for? And then we'd be like, my heart's um, having all these problems. We pray for their heart and God would actually answer those prayers and he would come and heal them. And so we started doing these things and I was almost like living a double lifestyle because no joke, literally finished praying for people, finished evangelizing, was out on the street for like two hours, went into work that same night, I was working in the ER, and as I stepped into work, the first thing I did was like, saw my friend, I was just like, yo, what's up? And then blah, 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 blah. Things that I didn't even wanna mention here, that's how I was speaking to my friends at work. But here, I was evangelizing, and I was helping people. These, there's such a humongous contrast that was kept help, happening, and I kept being stuck in this loop of just doing these things and then going back to living my personal lifestyle. And I was doing these things and then I was going back to live my personal lifestyle. And I was doing these things, I was going back to live my personal lifestyle. It's like this never ending loop of like, why is this not changing? I feel like I want to change. I feel like I want to be something better than this. I want to be a good Christian, but why am I going back into this lifestyle? And you see this, the same exact thing Jesus was actually outlining to us in one second. In Luke chapter 18, verse 12 to 13, what he was saying in those things is he was outlining whenever the, the Pharisee and the uh, other guy, the tax collector, were in the temple and they were praying. The Pharisee came in and he said, God, I have done these, this, and this, and this, and this, and this thing. I've tithed, I've fasted, I've prayed, I've helped. Look at me, look how good I am. Walks out and goes his own way. 
And what did he do? He went right back to his own Pharisee lifestyle. And then the tax collector, he was beating himself in the chest because he couldn't even speak to God properly. He knew that he was, he was not in the right standing. His heart posture was, God, I am not in a good standing with you right now, but I want to be. And for myself, I was literally in the same exact situation. I literally was walking around town, praying for people, evangelizing, spreading the word, talking to people about God, and I'll turn around and I'll go do my own thing. And I'll come back to God and be like, God, did you see all these healings? Did you see all these people that came to you because I was there? God, did you see how many people I prayed for? And it was just this cycle. And then I'll just turn around, like check, 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 turn around and go back to my own lifestyle. Now, I want to stop right here. If you guys actually feel like you had this happen in your life and this loop that you guys are just stuck in, comment below, what was your experience when you guys were doing this? See, back in the Old Testament, Isaiah 64, 6, Isaiah outlines this one really important thing that we sometimes miss. And he says, but we are all as, un as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. That hurts. See, we want to be coming to God and we want to say to God, hey, look what we've done. Look what we've accomplished. Look how good we are. But then we go back to our lifestyle and our righteousness becomes just as filthy rags because God is a just God and He cannot accept an offering that is not pure and clean and holy in front of Him. See, whenever Cain and Abel brought their offerings to the altar, they both brought an offering, but one was accepted and the other one was not. One was a true pure offering while Cain just brought his own works and his own talents and his own things. Whenever we come to God, God doesn't want our accomplishments. He doesn't want the, the achievements that we've done in life. All he wants is you. And today he's inviting you to step into a relationship with him. That you realize that he's not after whatever you're after sometimes. Sometimes his will and his desire is different than your will and your desire. See, in my life, whenever I encountered Jesus in my room two years ago, I was going through life thinking that I was checking off all the check marks. Marks. I kept doing Bible studies, I was doing worships, I was going to church, I was praying for people, I was out evangelizing. But one thing I wasn't doing is I wasn't having a pure relationship with Him. I was checking off the check boxes, but I wasn't checking off the most important one, which is surrendering myself and my wills and my desires to have His will and His desire be my everything. And today God wants to show this to you guys. So if you guys feel that pressing in your heart that, hey, this, this loop, this endless loop that I'm stuck in, it's so annoying, it's so tough. My efforts and my desires can only get me so far. God's inviting you as he invited the prodigal son because we see the prodigal son, we see this one, ama one amazing thing happen. He realizes that after he got his inheritance and after he went, and after he tried to do everything in his life, with his efforts and his own work, it all accounted to him being in the pig side, eating the same food as the pigs were eating. And he realized that the servants of his father's house were being treated in a better way than he was being treated. When he came back to his father, his father opened up his arms and he said, you are my beloved son. Because what the son didn't realize is that with his father and with his father's will and with his father's desires, he would have that ring on his finger and he would have that robe on his shoulders and he would be called a son, not a, a peasant that was eating from the pigsty, but a son. And he and his father would grow a, a humongous feast for him just because his father said, my son was lost and now he was found. That's how much God values your life and everything about you. He doesn't want your achievements. He doesn't want your your things that you have accomplished in your life. He just wants you and you personally. So if that, if you feel that invitation in your, in your heart right now, God invites you to just say, Lord, I'm right here, use me. You know, coming into your secret place, opening the Bible and say, God, I want to be used by you. And trust me, he's gonna take you on the journey. That's gonna be so amazing and so vivid and so pure. So with that in mind, guys, I love you all. For all the people that have supported me and just been commenting, giving me feedback and all these things that are really important to help me grow in this filmmaking. You guys are amazing. I love you all. For all the new viewers, welcome. I hope you guys like this. And if you guys did like this, 
start building your relationship with God even deeper than what you already have. Trust me, there's more and more and more. So with that in mind, like and subscribe, share this around. I love you all. Peace out.